Hello, everybody, and welcome to our proposed changes for skills for the upcoming Season 2 and potentially Patch 2.5 for Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you haven't seen our previous videos, we've already covered the Amazon and the Assassin, and I want to make sure to get out the rest of these videos as quickly as possible. As a quick side note, I just want to jump in and say, I know that my voice sounds like crap. I went to a lap over this weekend. Sorry, the Boston came out. I went to a live action role play event this weekend, and I had to play a Banshee character, which means I had to scream before I could use any of my abilities, and we ran that mod three times. So my voice is absolutely shot. And then in addition to that, I've already recorded 25 minutes of this video and found out that my microphone wasn't on. So this is round two. So there are going to be a lot of skills and people are going to have a lot of opinions because I think that Barbarian Pound for Pound is people's like most pet loved class in the game. So I promise you, we thought a lot about these changes. I was sitting there with chat and also Teo1904. And I really think that we honed down on the skills that legitimately need to see a change. Also, we got a really good recommendation from somebody in chat. So while it's going to require a bit more editing on my end, I am going to go ahead and try to include basically just headers for the skill, as well as the changes that we're recommending in a little bullet point, just in case you work a lot better seeing something on the screen rather than hear me drone on about it. Starting with the skill Grim Ward. Now, just as a quick reminder of how Grim Ward works, you need a body on the ground, but only specific bodies. You can't target a lot of different undead bodies and it will create a little totem, basically a trap from the assassin. This will apply a fear within its radius, it will also slow monsters, and it will reduce their physical damage reduction or their physical resistances. So this is going to work similar to amp damage into Crepify. The problem being that it is a fear type curse and fear curses cannot be applied to bosses. So you can't apply them to the boss of a pack, a champion pack, or to an act boss. While this could be a tool for handling physical immune monsters, it can only apply to base monsters or minion monsters. So here are our proposed changes. The first little suite of changes is remove the corpse requirement. Having a corpse requirement is kind of antithetical to how a barbarian should work because you want to be using find item. And since to get the maximum bonus out of Grim Ward, you would max out find potion to bring it up to minus 125 physical damage reduction. You're going to have a very strong find item. So it has a negative synergy in that regard. And on top of that, it means that you have to get a monster killed before you can apply the Grim Ward. So you have to be in the most dangerous place possible before you can get the benefit of the slow in the fear. If we're going to remove the corpse requirement, meaning you could just put a Grim Ward down within a radius of you, literally summoning it like a trap, like the assassin could, then we probably need to reduce its radius. Max radius gets up to be really high. In fact, it clears the entire screen. So if I could just proactively drop a Grim Ward at the edge of the screen and be fearing monsters on the next screen already as they become active, that's probably a bit too strong. The last change would be to add a limit to the totem. So perhaps literally a five trap limit here like the assassin has, but probably more likely to be two or three, just because if I can put down an infinite amount of Grim Wards, which you can technically do right now if you have an infinite number of corpses, you would be able to proactively apply a fear ring to the entire edge of the screen. And that's probably a little bit too strong and not the intended purpose of the skill itself. The next big bullet change for Grim Ward here would be to change it to an Amplify Damage or Decrepify Curse or some other type of curse that doesn't apply a fear. Again, since it applies a fear, you can't use this to actually reduce the physical damage reduction or break the immunities of bosses. And that pretty drastically limits it. And it almost forces every melee barbarian build to have access to Berserk, to have an access to a magical damage source. And that, I think, limits build design and build diversity across the Barbarian a lot more. And Grim Ward should be a secondary alternative to be able to manage physical immunities in the game for a character who is literally supposed to be the best at fighting. If you change it over to one of the other curses and remove the fear effect in its entirety, I think it would also increase its usability or at least how easy it is to pilot using Grim Ward. The second change is actually to the middle portion of this tree in its entirety. Shout battle orders, and battle command. Basically what it comes down to is I'd like to see the minimum duration for these skills brought up to about a minute. Right now, when you just get to level 30 and put your first point into battle command, you have battle command initially for 30 seconds and then 40 seconds if you use it to pre-buff yourself. And that means that basically after every monster pack that you attack, you have to recast battle command and battle orders. And since you're probably not gonna be doing that, you more quickly run out of the duration if it could just be brought up to a minute, it means that you could do a decent amount of your farming before having to reuse it. 
I do think that there's something to be said about other classes needing to cast battle command and battle orders more frequently since they're not a native barbarian and they're gaining access to a really powerful skill that they otherwise couldn't. So I like the idea that they still have to be more mindful of keeping the buffs up, but the barbarian themselves should be able to enjoy the benefits of battle command starting at level 30 without kind of just ignoring it unless you're pre-buffing for your battle orders. And then just because I like to have parity between skills, shout is another buff that starts off at a 30 second timer. And if that was just up to a minute, you again are gaining access to its benefit for a longer period of time and making your overall gameplay less repetitive and needing to spam buffs every other minute. I do think that we came to probably the best option for how to change some of the combat masteries, and it would go a long way to increase build diversity and weapon choices and add a lot of quality of life, especially in the early game. We would like to see Mace Mastery, Spear Mastery, and Polar Mastery have plus two increased attack speed on the skill itself. For people who don't know, skill increased attack speed is more powerful than item increased attack speed because it doesn't undergo diminishing returns. And the reason why we want to see it on mace, spear, and polearm is because 99 out of 100 barbarian builds are going to be using swords and axes as their best in slot gear in the end game. Let's say they just added one increased attack speed per hard skill point, meaning you can max out at plus 20 increased attack speed. This would go a long way to make mace options, spear options, and polearm options for a diversity of builds be a lot better. Let's say you're a whirlwind barbarian that's using a pole arm. Now you have 20 increased attack speed. You're going to be able to reach that five frame attack speed limit a lot easier. It's going to go a long way to help minimize the reduction in attack speed from Decrepify Curse and Chaos Sanctuary. And if you're using a skill like Berserk to be able to deal with physical immunes as a magic damage source, you're not going to need to stack as much increased attack speed to be able to have a decent Berserk attack when you're using a slower base. The other thing here is that maces have always been on the cusp as a best in slot option on some builds in the end game, but we also don't want to drastically increase the relevance of maces which are the go-to weapon when you are starting off as a barbarian. If you are not dual wielding scepters, you're literally doing the barbarian wrong. I think it's very fair to say that maces, spears, and pole arms are getting the shaft end of the deal, every pun intended there. And even if it just made leap attack builds feel a bit better, early game whirlwind builds feel a lot better, dual wielding maces, let's say you get an early crush flange on your barbarian, now it's not going to be attacking ridiculously slow. It would just go a long way to smooth out the early game and make the end game options a bit more viable and potentially incentivize you to go with a two handed build. Increased stamina. The most useless skill in the game, bar none. Putting a point into increased stamina does not increase the power of your character. Other than specifically for a frenzy, where you may not even actually max out increased stamina, increased stamina does nothing for your barbarian. For people who don't even know what it does, uh, you have a little yellow bar down here called your stamina, and stamina stops being a problem at level five because you're never running anywhere for so long that you actually run out of stamina. The first thing here, and I think that this would probably be the biggest hurdle, is actually changing the name of the skill because for the proposed changes to the skill, Increased stamina really doesn't actually describe what these changes would be. So I was thinking something like fortitude, but since that's a rune word, thinking of the word resilience. Change the skill name to resilience, and now you can open up what it does. Because even if it still increases your maximum stamina, that is literally making you more resilient, right? You're able to run for longer without having to face any physical issues for your character. They are more resilient. Now that we've changed it over to a skill name that would actually represent what the skill would do, there are three different options here. First one being add increased flat life, then less increased life per soft point from plus skills. While this goes a long way and the mods seem to be a really good option for this, in D2R it is a little bit too powerful because adding that flat life to your character from the skill should be hit by battle orders, and then you're getting a massive amount of additional life from that percentile increase. So I don't think that that is the cleanest option here, but it might be the easiest. A second option would be physical and magic damage reduced by. So this is something that reduces incoming damage by a flat amount, whether or not it is physical or a magic damage source, including the elemental damage types. This would go a long way for why you are more resilient. You literally take less damage. 
but I think that adding percentile damage reduction would be very much too strong for this skill and very difficult to balance around. In addition to that, considering increased stamina is only used on a frenzy build, being able to add additional damage reduction to a melee class that needs to get in close and personal makes a lot of sense and would help the early game and hardcore versions of these builds just feel a lot better until you have better gear. The last thing, and I think that this is my favorite recommendation that we came up with, would be adding on faster hit recovery. So I'm not sure what the values would have to look like. Again, a lot of testing would be needed. If me putting a couple points into this skill and then having plus skills from my gear would make it so that I could remove one to two faster hit recovery grand charms from my build, means I could add on additional life or I can add on additional gold find and magic find, additional damage if I wanted to. I also really like the idea of putting a couple points here, being able to hit the next fast hit recovery breakpoint, especially on something like a singer barbarian, where you would really like to be able to stack other things down your grand charms than hit recovery. I think it also just makes sense. You are more resilient, so you are literally able to recover from being hit in a very hard way. Faster, it would be within the theme of the barbarian. And it's kind of interesting to me that the barbarian doesn't have access to fast hit recovery from its combat mastery skills. And then you wouldn't feel bad putting in the one point so that you could get increased speed later on. I think that pound for pound, the barbarian combat skills tree is the most well balanced and most well catered skill tree in the game. The only problem with it are these three main skills right here. They're skills that other than in a speed run scenario, you are never going to see anybody use and we need to address that. So let's start with bash for people who don't know. The plus flat damage from Bash is actually bugged and does not apply to your character's damage at all. While it looks like it does on the character screen, it actually only counts as physical damage after the damage calculation has happened for the purposes of life stolen per hit and mana stolen per hit. So what's interesting about Bash is that you can actually life leech and mana leech as well as life tap leech off of monsters who are immune to physical damage because after the damage is dealt, it looks at how much Bash damage you have and let's say you had 20. And it goes, oh, OK, you dealt 20 physical damage, even though you didn't. So if you have life tap up, here's 10 life back. So first, we need to fix the skill bash. Other than that, we actually came up with a really, really cool idea. And I think Teo is the one who actually came up with this in its entirety. What if bash said added flat damage? And let's assume that it works correctly. You can only use the skill if you are unarmed. Finally, making the last niche build version of the barbarian being the pugilist. For the Barbarian who's supposed to be the master of all forms of combat, it's kind of interesting that he is absolutely terrible at unarmed combat. If Bash could only be used without having a weapon equipped, and we were to add a second mechanic to the game, which would be that Barbarians have damage on their gloves when attacking unarmed, you really open up a whole new category of a Barbarian fighting style. So let's say your Steel Rend Ogre Gauntlets added 10 to 50 damage when used in unarmed, and now you have bash as well, adding flat damage. You see how you could now have, and it would still be an absolute meme. Don't get me wrong. Absolute meme. Only joke runs would do it. You'd see every single streamer doing challenge runs of it. But it'd be really, really cool if a gloves actually had damage on them for melee attacks. Bash could only be used if you don't have a melee weapon equipped. You could have punch shield barbs in this way. I think it would make it so that Bash could actually have an identity because there's no world within which you're going to use Bash as it currently is for any type of build because every other end game attack skill for the Barbarian is just strictly better. Stun. First off, let me explain what stun does because I'm pretty sure nobody knows. Stun will incapacitate any base monster hit with it. It will apply a stun to them, meaning they can't take actions. Secondly, it can be applied to bosses of elite packs and champions, but it has a reduced chance of being applied. And if it's used in PvP, well, it won't actually incapacitate another player. While they have the stun debuff on them, they will always be put into hit recovery when they are attacked. So it has some viable use there. The problem is, is that stun, as the skill itself actually doesn't do damage, you'll see that the damage increase is solely from its synergy with Bash. And then on top of that, if you check out the synergies, you'll see that it has a duration synergy with Warcry. Now, the problem with that is if you're going to be putting points into Warcry, I would just use Warcry because Warcry is going to deal physical damage and it is going to apply stun to all monsters within its radius at FCR frames, which are almost double the speed that you're ever going to be able to attack with a weapon. So how do you fix stun? Well, if I check my notes very quickly, I believe I said, I don't know, man. 
No joke. That is what I have written in my notes. I have no idea how they could actually make it so that stun is a viable option. It's similar to the Grim Ward issue where we already have Howl to apply a fear effect. So why do we need a second more restricted fear effect to be able to apply to a target? You would never use stun in any scenario where you have points in Warcry. Warcry is strictly better. With stun, you have to hit the target to be able to apply the stun. So there's no world within which you also want to be like single target stunning a single monster so you can attack another monster. I think stun has to be replaced with a completely different skill in its entirety. And I'm not sure what that looks like. But as it stands right now, there's nothing you could do to it where other skill identities aren't already fulfilling that role. And even if you were to add on a ton of damage with this, I can't imagine a build that would actually prioritize using. People may not know that Concentrate is actually like a pretty dope skill, but it is. So it causes you to be uninterruptible. The place where you see Concentrate get used the most often, at least in the speedrun scene, is against somebody like Duriel, who is going to stun and knock you back. If he attacks you while you're doing a Concentrate attack animation, you don't get knocked back and your attack is going to go off. You may not hit, but your attack is going to successfully get to the point where it could hit. So while a lot of people are saying you need to do something concentrate, it needs something else, something. It serves a purpose. It has a niche use. It brings something to the Barbarian that the Barbarian can't otherwise get. It's a really safe and good option, especially for hardcore, where you need to know that your attacks are going to go off so you have a chance to life leech, etc. I actually think it's in a good place and it does a cool thing. And whether or not people use it isn't really a determining factor for if the skill is vibe. Now, I know everybody wants me to talk about Whirlwind. It got nerfed, Mac. It got nerfed. It got nerfed. It's so bad now. It got nerfed. It got nerfed. I think that the changes to Whirlwind are ultimately healthy and good for the game. It is strictly stronger for dual wielding Whirlwind builds. It does nerf the maximum attack speed for two handed weapons. I understand that as well as making Whirlwind feel worse, specifically in Chaos Sanctuary. And you also need to open up at least one of your gear pieces for cannot be frozen. That being said, I think that whirlwind makes sense now. The skill is more intuitive. What it does adds up. I legitimately believe that the changes to whirlwind were ultimately healthy. So I don't think it needs to go any further. And I think depending on what you could do to this skill, you are going to break it in some key way. So as it stands right now, I think that whirlwind's good. And I wanted to just touch on it because I don't want people to think that I forgot it or ignored it. I'm putting my name on the line. I think the changes to Whirlwind were healthy. So I look forward to you screaming at me, telling me that I'm absolutely wrong and I don't understand this game down in the comments. I'll see you there. But that's it for the Barbarian. Honestly, the Barbarian is arguably the most powerful character in the game. I think adding too much more onto his kit will already inflate the ridiculous power the Barbarian brings to the table. I know that a lot of people hate the Barbarian or think that the Barbarian is weak or think that it takes too long to get a Barbarian off the ground. And to those people, I would just say, check out stuff like Leap Attack, check out War Cry, and even check out Double Throw because there are so many amazing early game options for the Barbarian now that all translate into the late game and all have really powerful late game builds that allow you to abuse one mechanic or the other to be able to cheat out a lot of power that a lot of other classes really don't have access to. But yes, let the flaming commence. Please come explain to me how wrong I am about Whirlwind and how I don't understand this game. You've already done it before, but I'm looking forward to people coming back and telling it to me again. Honestly, I love those types of comments because it's just very interesting to see people's understanding of the game and what is and is not important. So even though a lot of it is very hateful, it is pretty eye opening and it's actually very insightful. So please, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.